that was so energetic that I'm okay, but yeah. busting out. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So welcome everyone again to our lesson discussion, Bible discussion. Um, this week uh, we're on lesson four, and the title is "Seeing the Goldsmith's Face." Seeing the Goldsmith's Face, and I have here with me a group of energetic young people. Can I see the energy, please? Yeah. Energy. <laughs> look, look at that. <laughs> <Let it play. laughs> yeah, we're going to go and introduce um, ourselves. So we have a new face. Welcome to our YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I have on my right side here, um, Kanise. So Kanise, you tell us what you, you know. Okay, I'm going to say your name. But you can say it again, and then tell us what you're talking about today. Um, my name is Kanize Lazaro Nicole. Uh, I am a youth at Masaki SDA Church, and I will be one among the panel members today. Thank you for telling your passport name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, whoever would like to know me would rewind and re listen. Okay, thank you, Kanize. And our next is the most energetic person here so far. Mm -hmm. um, Matilda sits here. I am going She's to... always blowing her own trumpet. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I know I need new friends like yeah. But I will be talking about last words. Like last words. These are the last words I'm going to tell you. Yes. Stay tuned to know what. That is done. I'm not, not to prepare anything, but okay. <laughs> yes. And next to how we have. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. I think I'm the. If you are, am I the youngest out of all here? Oh, it's no, the youngest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. But anyways, you can take. Depends that. on the day. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, very much. <laughs> also, they have all the youngest. Oh, that's so nice. For the yeah, first time. Thought, really? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm Natui here. I'll be speaking about our hearts and the communities. Yes. Okay. And um, next to him, next to her, sorry, we have Fortune. <laughs> Many suits. Uh -huh. Fortune, um, going to be speaking to you guys about the wives. Uh, the wives don't talk much, so that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> But you made it. Yeah, sorry, guys. <laughs> no, bro, you can't say that on video. People will stop watching. Like, you will see from this comment the, the viewers <laughs> just go down. No, no, it's just. Cut that part out. Okay, I did actually read just a second. Right, okay. Cool. We're not asking when. I'm the Razi. I'll be Yonazi, Yonazi. We're, we're doing fast with me. I'm saying Yonazi, Yonazi. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, the title that I'll be talking about is In His Image. Mm. We're made in God's image. So, mm -hmm. what happened? Yeah. Deep question. Um, can you say, could you please pray for us? Um, let us close our eyes and pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to deliver your word to thy people and we thank you for giving us this chance to put our ideas and thoughts to enrich your people with this Bible study. In Jesus Christ I pray and believe. Amen. 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 So, <coughs> seeing the goldsmith's face, our scripture reading is from 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 and it says, but we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we are beholding the glory of the Lord in a mirror, as in a mirror, and are being transformed to that image, from glory to glory. And it reminds me of the verse in James that says, you know, if you look at something in the mirror, you need to go back and if, and if you, and, and, and don't like change your appearance, it's basically pointless. You know, you need to look at the mirror and change your appearance. So as we behold um, the, glory the, Lord, the glory of the Lord in the mirror, we are to be transformed to that image from glory to glory. Mm -hmm. 
and there's a lot of deep stuff there. Mm. But anyway, let's get into the discussion for today. So, <clears throat> a lady called Amy Carmichael took a group of children to a traditional goldsmith in India. And <clears throat> as the goldsmith was smithing the gold or cleaning the gold, the goldsmith would apply um, a mixture of salt, tamarind fruit, and brick dust. And then and, and then um, have gold in that mixture and then <clears throat> put the gold and all that mixture into the into the furnace into the fire and as the as as it was put into the fire because of different heating points of this mixture the everything else would melt and then the gold is supposed to you know come out as pure as gold um so as the fire devoured the mixture the gold became purer and the goldsmith would take it out they take out the gold and look at it, mm, is it clear enough? No. So then you would smear the mixture again and put it back into the fire. Okay? And it would get heated more and more. And then each time that you would put it back into the fire, the heat got increased. So he takes it out, looks at it, eh, not yet. Mixes it, put, 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 puts the mixture on it, puts it back and turns up the heat. And the kids were curious. So how do you know when this gold is pure enough? And the goldsmith says, when I can see my face in it. Mm -hmm. When he can mm -hmm. see his face in it, that's when he knows that that gold is pure. So in the same way, God is seeking to purify us, to refine us as gold, to transform us into his image. Yeah? And um, it seems kind of mind-boggling that the only way that we can attain Christ's character is by passing through life's crucibles. You know, the crucibles we're talking about, you know, since week one. So those same crucibles are the tools he uses to purify us and to turn us so that we, he can see his image in us, just as the goldsmith knows that the gold is pure enough and he can see his face in it. And so, as we're going to discuss this week, I'm looking forward to understanding the crucible of purification. Because that is what we're going to focus on. It is scary. Because yeah. I'm imagining, you know how we say it, um, going through the fire. fire. Mm -hmm. So literally, take you out. Oh no, she didn't burn enough. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> take her back in, increase the fire kind of thing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's scary. It is. And I think the essence of it is... I mean, the different elements to this whole goldsmith thing. First of all, it's the goldsmith himself who is putting us through the fire. So that means we're not in the fire alone. You know, just like the four, the, was it three or four? The, mm. the Hebrew boys, the three mm. Hebrew boys, and mm. there was a fourth man in the fire. Mm. So even us, when we're taken through the fire, we have a promise that God is with us in that fire. Marie, remember, yeah. remember when they were put in the fire, people yeah. burned outside. Yeah. Mm. The people who put them in the mm. fire, they burned, mm -hmm. literally died then and there. So, yeah. I mean... But because they were with Christ in the fire, they didn't... They, not, not even their clothes were smelling of smoke. Mm. I find very Meaning the mixture and the gold. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Look at that. I can't wait to this week. So, um, and then... We, we, so you can trust that the goldsmith is, as, we, as we've been discussing over the past few weeks, if we're not worthy, if we're not, if we're not gold, you know, if we do not see something worthy in us, then we wouldn't have even been going through the fire. But because this goldsmith knows that there is gold here, I have to cleanse it, I have to, I need to see my face, I need to know that it's pure enough, that it's pure so that it can reflect my image. And in the same way, God is taking us, as we're going to see this week, that God um, has a standard for us to reach. He has set a standard for us to be purified, to reflect his image, to reflect his character in, our, in us. And he is using certain um, agents of purification. We'll see what those agents of purification are and what the result of purification is that he's looking to get. And so we're going to start, we're going to delve into the lesson head first with uh, none other than Yonazi, who's going to take us through Sunday, day one. Tell us, brother. Um, so before we go into day one, I was trying to understand this whole mixture mm -hmm. combination because um, there's always a mixture that is burnt mm. to give out gold. 
So when he takes out the gold and sees that it's not pure enough, he mixes it with another mixture and then puts it back in and increases the heat. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't just put the gold back in, there's always a mixture mm. that is attached to it. That has to be burnt for the gold to become pure. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to um, reflect what, what are the mixtures that, what are the mixtures in our lives that God puts or introduces with a specific purpose of making us pure. Mm. As in, God brings some things in our lives to burn them mm -hmm. so that it become pure. And it's sad that, so it's important to understand, to know what are those things and not to cling on to them. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you may be crying, oh, why did my so and so burn? But it's because this was just a mixture. God was trying to take out the gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's important to to be able to identify is this part and it is the refiner who actually knows this mm -hmm. is gold, this is mixture. Mm -hmm. And so if it gets burnt, the gold does not get burnt by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is the mixture. So if you see things burning in your life, <laughs> it's not yeah, really it's part of the gold, it's actually mm -hmm. a mixture. Anyways. Yeah. Um, so it's just a good food for thought. Um, in his image the very famous verse in Genesis 2 7, yeah, Genesis 1 27, I mean, um, God made man in his image. So the original plan was God creates man, and again, uh, why did God create 7 billion people? Like how he created Adam? He just created two beings and initiated the system of them reproducing after their own kind. So the initial, uh, the original plan was that when God is, when God creates man in His image, man reproduces the image. Mm -hmm. So the more they reproduce, they reproduce His image. But when sin entered, when you read um, the description of Seth, of of Cain, it says Cain was in the image of Adam, not in the image of God. Mm -hmm. So that's where the distinction came in. And in the real sense, or in a, in a general sense. When man sinned, they no longer reflected the image of God. They reflected another image. What image is that? Um, when you read Genesis 3, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Mm. And it is a serpent that deceived man. And so when man listened to the serpent who was a beast, they stopped reflecting the image of God and reflected the image the of beast. the beast. The beast. Oh. Huh. And when you read in Revelation, the whole great controversy is about the image of God, mm. the image of the beast. Mm. And we are to overcome the image of the beast. So what God is doing in the plan of salvation is to restore, to at first remove the image of the beast from man and to re establish or restore the image of God that was originally there. Mm -hmm. So that is the whole great controversy story in a nutshell. Now, this day starts with a very, very powerful verse from Romans 8, um, verse 29. So I read Romans 8, 29 and 30. It says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate, to be conformed to the image of his son. Now, before I continue, um, you know, you've heard, you've heard people saying, um, God is not fair because he knows those who will be lost. <coughs> Isn't it? If one of us, let's say, will be lost, God knows. So, whatever I do, in the end, it's futile because I will be lost anyways. So there are people who believe that um, because God already knows who is saved and who is lost, then I don't have a part to play. Uh, but this verse actually tells us very, something very different. Uh, it's actually, the, the previous verse starts by, you know, you know the verse Romans 8, 28. We know that mm -hmm. all things work together for good. Mm -hmm. And then it says in verse 29, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate, to be conformed to the image of his son. Mm -hmm. So what God predestined 
God, did nev God never predestines someone to be lost. God predestinated everyone to be saved. Mm -hmm. This is also um, explained or re reiterated in Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1 verse 4 and 5. Um, it says, According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, mm -hmm. that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So again, we are told that in, in God's plan, or if it were God's will, everyone will be saved, because that was our predestination. But some will be lost, not because God predestined it, but because we chose, he gave us free will. Now, um, there's a very, very powerful quote that is stated here in the Desire of Ages, page 671. Um, it says, I'll read these two sentences. The very image of God is to be reproduced in humanity. The honor of God, the honor of Christ, is involved in the perfection of the character of his people. Again, I said that the whole purpose of the plan of salvation, or this whole great controversy, is about God restoring his image. Mm -hmm. Now, when Satan deceived man, um, the whole... By the way, this world is a, it's, it's a cinema for the whole universe. And the universe includes the angels in heaven, includes other heavenly beings. So they're all watching. And remember how sin entered. Lucifer had started a debate in heaven, questioning God's um, love and the capability of his beings to keep his law. So the, what God is proving to the whole universe who are now watching the earth is that God can have beings who have free will and still keep his law. Mm. And that is what Lucifer is was claiming that it is never possible. Mm. It's either you make robots who keep your law or you let people decide and they will never keep your law. Mm. So God, the honor of God and the honor of Christ is in proving that his image can be restored in those same people who Satan said these people are lost. So that's, whole, that's the whole purpose of the plan of salvation. Now, this day closes with a very interesting question that I will pose to you. It's a self-reflective question. It says, imagine being on the field of a huge stadium. Sitting on the bleachers on one side are heavenly beings loyal to the Lord. On the other side are beings who have fallen with Lucifer. Now, if your life for the past 24 hours were played out on that field, which side would have more to cheer about? Mm. And what does your answer tell you about yourself? Mm. Yeah, I will end there. <laughs> That's a deep question. Mm. Very deep, very which deep. side would be cheering more, I wonder? Mm. Mm. That would be our secret to keep. 24 mm. hours ago, the past 24 hours. Mm. Okay. Mm. No, will there, will there even be Two sides cheering. Um, I was just one side. Oh, it's just one side. It's not possible. I get it. It depends on the day. If it was, <laughs> <laughs> if it was a Sabbath, right? Yeah. Was it <laughs> you or was it somebody I had that they were asked when you and Jesus to come? They're like, I think it was you. It, 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 it should be on yeah. Sabbath, you know. I should yeah. be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if we could. If our, what was in our hearts could be revealed. Mm, mm. Even on Sabbath. On Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> it's worse. Because <laughs> so yeah. we're we're yeah. you'll have it in thoughts, mm, yeah. not mm, in real life. Mm, yeah. So, like, whatever is going through your head, and you'll be like smiling in church, like, hallelujah, guys. And they're like, mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm. what you're thinking? Thunder will strike. Mm. I uh, just, just want to add something mm. on the image of God. Mm and relating it to our key text. So, the key text talks about glory unto glory, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, see this, Exodus 33, uh, verse 18. Moses tells God, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. So Moses is asking God to show him what? His glory. His glory. And what does God say? 
uh, what does God say? And he said, I will make all my goodness <clears throat> pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And then he, he goes on to say, he said, thou canst not see my face, and there shall be no man see me, and leave. And the Lord said, behold, there is place by me. And it goes on, goes on, goes on, goes on. <coughs> um, then it says, and it shall come to pass, verse 22, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And then chapter 34 now, uh, we see uh, verse 5, um, uh, actually let's start with verse, uh, um, actually let's start with verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, he uh, the two uh, tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tables uh, the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of the mountain. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount, neither let the flocks nor herds uh, feed before that mount. And he held huge the two tables of stone like unto the first. Uh, now I'm going to verse 5. It says, And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And, passed, and the Lord passed by before him, as he had promised earlier there, as we read, and the Lord, and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and unto the fourth generation. In verse 8 says that Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. Um, now, what did Moses cast from God to see his glory? What did God show him? What did God proclaim? His character. His character. Mm -hmm. What is the glory of God? His character. Mm -hmm. If you read Psalms 19 verse 1 when he talks about the heavens proclaiming his glory, basically what he's talking about is basically his character is visible in nature, both the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. We look around and what we see is God's character. Now, you go back to 2 Corinthians 3.18 and as you read it, it says, But we all with open face, beholding as in a mirror now, looking at Jesus, the glory, the character, now mm -hmm. replace now glory with character, the character of the Lord are changed into the same image, which is what now, that character which we saw in the mirror, the image, the thing you see in the mirror, beholding, so we see that character, and then we are changed into the same character that we see from character unto character even by the Spirit of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the image of God? When God said we were created in His image, what was it that we were imaging? His character. His character. And what is He changing us unto? His character. Character unto character. And so, uh, that's, that's a very important thing to understand because we're talking about in His image. And really, if you think about it, um, the whole... Um, the whole great controversy, like Yonazi had explained very deeply, was basically about the character of God. Mm -hmm. And we, by our choice, departed from that. And it has been God's um, uh, effort to restore us to that character. But it's a process of character unto character. But how does it start? By beholding his mm -hmm. character. Now, how and, and all of that, I think, will continue to digest over the course of the week. Um, I think also to add on that, um, as Yonazi, you were asking us about uh, about the question for reflection. I thought of Jacob. Remember when he decided to trick his in-law by putting a stick on the water so that the animal come and blemish and all that. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. That it is what you look at that will reflect you. If the stick was like a sin. So when the animals were looking at that, that's why uh, when they give birth, their children also have that blemish. But if it was clear water that they're drinking from and looking at, that's even your other generations. So that was also something that was happened. Yeah. 
And thank you, Inez, for bringing in the element of the page controversy, um, because that is, um, that is, you know, that is the that is the the fundamental part of why we are on earth. You know, we are part of this great controversy. And as Matthew five sixteen says, um, it says, "Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven." So we have a part to play in this great controversy. And whatever way we live our lives, you know, um, the way that we live our lives can honor God or can, you know, not honor God. And so we are called, we have a part to play in ensuring that our lives are honoring Christ. Yeah. Um, just goes just more to the question that he asked, you know, if <laughs> which side <laughs> is celebrating more when you when they view your 20, past 24 hours of life. So we have seen that. Um, the purification process requires a standard, and the standard is Christ's character, yeah, the character of God to be um, imbued in us. But as the way the gold is put in the fire and it's being purified, the thing that is purifying it is an agent of purification. So as we're being made or being transformed into the character of Christ, what is, it, what is the agent of our purification? You know, what tool is being used to purify us? So I would like to go to Kalise to tell us what is being, what tool, what element is used to purify us and what should we come out of that with? Okay. So um, I'll be dealing with Monday, which answers most of what you asked, which is faith amid the refining fire. Um, for me, I envision as life as this whole battle, but for in the concept of the goldsmith, we see as life as the refining process, the purification of this of this gold. So in this battle, we believe that there are forces that are against We usually see it, but we don't see it at a bigger picture. We envision it in a very small perspective, whereby we just envision in the near future, not the future. And so we put our faith on God, who is invisible. As we can see in Hebrews 11, verse 27, which says, by faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invincible. So we just know that how Pharaoh was scared of God, regardless. He, he has never met him, but all these things that used to happen in the battle, like it was very scary for him. And he just defined him as the person who's invincible and so we come back to job um the person who we see clearly the purification mm -hmm. process in every single way and through all these <coughs> terrible trials that job went through it's amazing that he he endured it by just having the faith in God like he never knew that if God allowed this to happen but he just knew that I can get through this and God's got me and that's kept him going like the whole time and just how this gold is refined we believe that Job also looks in the future and believe that God is going to be there for me so no matter how much he lost, no matter how much his, even his wife doubted this purification process, but he still didn't question God. And the Bible didn't give us the whole detail as to how he went through it. And this showed that there is no way to show that this refining, how to describe the refining fire like how he went through this how he endured it in details they spared the details for us but the little we know the little we 
have read in the Bible shows us how the refining process is important as humans and how God is searching that reflection of himself from the gold as how the goldsmith is and there are certain few self questions that we need to contemplate on as in do you feel the fire mm -hmm. are you sure you're able to go through it you know and same thing as how people are scared of <laughs> if the judgment day comes and like it's your time and your calling is to go to hell and be with Satan for eternity and you just think about how hot that fire is going to be like for, for a moment you might just say mm, let me just stop I mean it's too much sins let me start repenting now and this all these things like you can say that how you, it's like how you adjust to a different job, a different house. Maybe you're ill, too ill that your financial status starts to feeble. And we then again see that God is trying to purify us by, as how we have seen on Sunday, in his image, character onto character. So all these is just a process for us to get there and um, it is powerful that we have seen Job's testimony as the purification and that we, God has seen us God has seen himself through him and um, however he didn't understand in the beginning he still knew that these trials would would mean something and we believe that even in our daily life we believe that um god does god never gives us something that we can't handle mm -hmm. he knows that we will handle it no matter how how big you feel like it is but just know that if God put you through this, mm -hmm. He knows you can get out of it. Mm -hmm. So um, that's that's all I got for. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I think for me, um, Job's faith is just wow, wow. wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because <laughs> man's man's is just not here. <laughs> like even if he slay me, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And in Job chapter three, verse ten. He actually says, uh, so Job 23 from verse 1 to 9, Job is like going off, going all out, like not understanding what God is doing. Mm. I can't see him on my right, left side or my right side. Like I can't mm. see him. Like I can't discern why God is trying to, what, what is he trying to do really? And then he, in verse 10 he says, but he knoweth the way that I take. Mm. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. So I don't, I will not see what God is trying to do. But I, he, I know that he knows mm. everything about me. And whatever this is, I know that eventually I will come from the school. And that gave him that faith that he did not know have the backstory of oh, Suju, the devil went, Suju, where, Suju to do what, Suju to talk about to what. He didn't have that backstory. All he knew was, I'm going to get through this. And mm. when I do, I'm going to be like God. I'm going to be as pure. Yes. Like God's character is going to be in me, going to be revealed in me. And I find that just astonishing. Yeah. Sorry guys, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, the, the fire whereby people are going to burn, or hell, is it going to be an endless fire? Like um, the people who are going to be burning? Mm -hmm. Like will they be burning as burning or how will it be? Would you want to find out? I want to find out. He <laughs> <laughs> doesn't want to wait to find out. <laughs> Why are you asking? Because I just want to know. So, You're testing the water. <laughs> no, it's like, um, I want to understand, is it going to be the, the, the fire whereby people are going to burn us, burn forever? Like in a crucible. Or, yes, or maybe, is, is the fire whereby you just burn and you will stop? Like, no, no, no. It's, it's like you're in an immortal body, right? You're burning, 
you're burning, but you don't end. Okay, so you, you, you feel you also feel the pain and all that. Okay, that's that's really yeah. bad. Like, yeah. Malachi four verse one. Um, first, let me answer. Mm, yeah. The wicked will be burnt up, mm. Mm. just as how fire continues to burn until whatever is burning is burnt up, and, and then, then the fire is, is done. Yeah. Mm. That's what's going to happen. So they'll die with the fire. Yeah. Yes. So Malachi four, <laughs> Malachi four verse one says this: For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. Mm. Do you know what stubble is? You'll find out. And the day that cometh shall burn them up. Mm. Burning up. Saith the Lord of hosts. That it shall leave them neither root nor no branch. branch. Root meaning the devil himself yeah. and all the people who no came. Branches. Uh, all the branches. <laughs> <laughs> and when you read also verse 3, it says, and ye shall tread down the wicked, mm. for they shall be ashes mm. under the soles of your feet. So, what are ashes? Do ashes continue to burn? No. no. no ashes are the remainder of something that was burnt. burnt. Mm. So, the, do you know, by the way, I will not explain this, I will live in suspense. <laughs> <laughs> but everlasting fire is actually for the righteous. Not for the wicked. Not for the wicked. Not for mm. the wicked. Oh, mm. uh, Read uh, Isaiah 33 verse so, 14. Wait, so, 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 so the wicked are going to have their own fire and the righteous ones are going no, to have their own fire. No, no, no. You know God is, is oh, fire. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Mm. Okay. Uh, and if you're going to be with God, you should, be, you should be fire. You'll be burning with him. Yeah. Just like how Moses, you know, he saw the bush Isaiah? that was burning. I was getting <laughs> that. Yeah. Moses saw the bush that, that was, was burning. Yeah. But it was mm -hmm. not getting consumed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was a depiction of the righteous who will be living with God. They will be burning yeah. because God is fire, but they will not get burnt. So for but the wicked will be burnt up. Mm -hmm. The righteous will continue burning and will not be consumed. Follow up question. Isaiah 33, verse 14. Verse 14. Yeah, let me get there quickly also. Isaiah? Isaiah 33, verse 14. It says, The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with a devouring fire? Mm. What is a devouring fire? God. Mm. Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? What are the everlasting burnings? <laughs> yeah. So that's more of like symbolic language. It doesn't mean that God is like walking fire. No. <laughs> but. I think that that depiction of Moses and the burning bush is, you know what the devil has been doing? He has twisted the truth and made it appear as if it is the wicked that will, be continue, that will continue to burn until, but it's actually the opposite. Thank you. Just, just a Thanks. slight addition to that is the fact that, remember, it is not God's intention to punish people for not choosing Him. Mm. Mm. It is His intention to wipe off sin mm. so that He may restore us to the greatness and the wonderful things that He had ordained for us. Mm. For Him to keep those people eternally burning, then it would be for Him to punish them uh, and keep them there. I mean, mm -hmm. from the moment you die, you don't even feel the pain. So you basically right. still, sin still exists. Mm -hmm. But we're told that sin will be there no more. So sin still exists, it's just burning somewhere in some sort of punishment. And that who really loves people that much would not subject them to such punishment. Mm -hmm. Because, again, it is not his will that any of us perish. So it is actually the devil's uh, portion in the great controversy yeah. to taint God's character by painting him as a dictatorial, overbearing, evil-loving, vengeful being mm -hmm. that would love to punish those who don't choose him. Mm -hmm. Total pain forever for the rest of their lives. Okay. Yeah, thank you for answering that very, very deep. important question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. We should have a Bible Q&A thing. <laughs> I, st I, st I, still, I, still I still have a follow-up question on that. So meaning that um, in order for the wicked to dwell with the Lord, they should be cleansed. So meaning, 
the eternity, the thousand years that they're going to spend in hell <laughs> is refining. And after those thousand years, they'll be like, the ashes are the sins like, that so, remain, right? In those are thousand years, the righteous will be in heaven, uh -huh. yeah. going through judgment. Uh -huh. But on the earth, which will be hell uh -huh. by then, oh. it will only be the devil who will be, be there. there. If you read Revelation, I think it's 21 or 20, I'm not sure. After the thousand years, then the wicked are resurrected. Mm. And then they collect each other, trying to overcome as the city is coming down. And then fire comes down from heaven and devours them. Mm. So it's not like they'll be burning for a thousand years, no. But after the thousand years, the wicked will be resurrected and then they will be burnt up. Oh, so, so meaning that if your fire is, if, 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 if your sins are done, like you, 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 you like. If your sins are done, you you actually be in heaven <laughs> for the a thousand years. Not no no no. no as in as in if you're one among if you're amongst the wicked, wicked. yes, uh -huh. your sins are done. Like you're already you cleansed as you vow it. No, actually, no, what, you yeah. Yeah. Let, let, let me let me let me let me make this very simple. Okay, the fire, the fire from God, is actually to devour sin. Mm -hmm. But the problem when man sinned, mm. sin was just so intertwined in his nature that it was, if God wanted to devour the sin, mm. he would have to devour the person. Mm. But he loved man too much to let him be devoured. So the plan of salvation is for God to separate man and sin. Mm. So for those who will be willing to let go of sin, mm. God will devour the sin and the man will be clean. Mm -hmm. But if we cling on to sin, because God, the fire will just devour the sin. So Sister King Anania, the sin, we will burn with the sin. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that is why the righteous will, will be able to live with God because they have no sin in them. Mm -hmm. So the fire has nothing to devour in them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. And so that's a whole purification process. You know, mm -hmm. as you're saying that through this time, the first salvation is for God trying to separate the man from the sin mm -hmm. you know and he is using trials and um to refine us and to purify us mm -hmm. and sometimes it these trials don't make sense yeah just like jobs they didn't make sense some of us i mean in life we go through challenges illness that you don't understand why is this illness not okay the doctors are trying to figure out what is happening and really they can't put a finger on why why you're sick and where you'll be admitted in hospital and there's no disease that they're pinpointing to. But through it all, we should be like Job mm -hmm. and have that faith that he knows the way that I take. Mm -hmm. When he has refined me, I'll come out as gold. Mm -hmm. And that should be what we're keeping our eye to. Mm -hmm. Now, we are moving, we have seen what the standard is. The standard is Christ's image in us, Christ's character revealed in us. And we have seen that God is using... Um, you know, trials and all these tribulations we're passing through on earth to refine us and to purify us, right? Mm. So now next is what is what is the envisioned outcome of this purification process? What is this character? Okay, I'm kinda like I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> what is this? The I know that it's better the things of skills. But what is this thing that God is trying what really is the goal of this purification process. What is it? What is trying to be attained? And so we go to our sister Matilda, who's going to, you know, give us a, a one side of what is God trying to attain? An yes. energetic one. Mm. 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 <laughs> Lively. Well, please don't set the bar too high. <laughs> but um, so on Tuesday, we the topic says Jesus' last words, which even before reading the lesson, I was curious, like. The moment you hear last words, or if someone is on a dying bed and they gave their last wishes or last words, it's something that's taken with so much weight, weight yes. right? Heavy. Heavy weight, yeah. Like, so I was like, okay, this, this part of the lesson is actually something that has a lot of weight because it will answer most of the questions we've been asking ourselves throughout the time. So I was like, okay, before I even read that lesson, who else in the Bible, because this is Jesus' last word, who else in the Bible gave their last words? 
So, do you know that class of us for me and my house, we will serve the Lord? Mm -hmm. That was actually Samuel's last word. That was Joshua mm -hmm. before he died. So, basically, even if I was in Joshua's house, then I hear my dad saying that before he dies. Definitely, I will serve the Lord because that is his mm -hmm. last vision, mm -hmm. right? And also, Jacob also, before he died, he actually one said, I, I don't want to be buried in Egypt, then went on blessing Joseph's son and his children and all that and all that. So again, last words have this weight that means a lot. Even when the person leaves, it actually sticks with you more than the greater part of their lives. So among Jesus' last words, he was in Jerusalem. After starting his journey and all those miracles and everything he, had, he did so he got to jerusalem and just before the last supper with the disciples he was talking to them and giving them counsel so among one of his last words was the parable of the ten virgins which we all know the parable that um five were wise and five were foolish and the foolish one went to a wedding carried their lamps that's, that's the foolishness, but they didn't put the, it didn't have any oil. But those who were wise, there was oil. So after that, they, they slept and slumbered. But when the groom got there, they were like, Ah, please share your oil, please share your oil. And the wise was like, Well, like, we can't share, like, the oil is only enough for us. I would also say, I would also say, can't share. So why, why would you, it's not being selfish, but why would you lighten up your, your candle well? Eh? This is not their life. Stingy. Hey, no. <laughs> so if you have, you can't share with your neighbor. God is love. No, if I have. And but if it's not enough. No, but even even if let it's a bottle, you can do like half half. Half yeah, half. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this are, this are the Christians we have. But now, what do you think the oil represents? Because it was a parable, so it has a meaning, right? <laughs> yeah. So what does the oil? Because to a point that the wise knew it was. They couldn't share because they weren't foolish also they actually knew the importance of the oil and they're like we can't share what does the oil represent anyone any idea no and the holy spirit the holy spirit yeah which actually makes sense because once you have the holy spirit i can't be like here have this house <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so but ellen white actually one agrees with that it is the holy spirit but also she talks about character it is christ's character okay. so basically the wise uh walked with christ's character which is the oil and that's why when the time where the groom was here when the time when christ came they could actually go with him because they had the same character mm -hmm. as christ and that's why they couldn't share because honestly you, you cannot share character mm -hmm. So the lesson later on talks about in Matthew 25 from verse 31 all the way until 43 talks about sheep and goat that in few words uh, they were separated. Then the sheep were asked, "What did you, uh, you actually took care of me when I was at there? You fed me when I was hungry. You clothed me and all those stuff." But they were like, when did we do that? Yes. And actually it was answered that when I wasn't there, you actually helped the needy. And the goat were like, you did not help me. And they were like, but you weren't there. How, how, how do you, what do you say we didn't feed you when you were hungry? Mm -hmm. And later on it was explained that you didn't help the less fortunate and those people who needed. Mm -hmm. So again, that all talks about character that the sheep had the character of Christ, of helping the less fortunate, feeding them, clothing them, and all that. So basically, as much as this lesson, uh, this day says the oil is the character, mm -hmm. but in real sense, when I started thinking about it, it's not only character, but it's actually both of them. It's the Holy Spirit and the character, because they do not... You know, inseparable. You, yeah, they're inseparable. You can't say, I have Christ's character, and not have the Holy Spirit. Or you can't say, I have the Holy Spirit, but your character does not reflect. Mm. It's also mm. just like how everyone has his or her own faith. Yes. Oh my God, I feel like when you're the, the faith that you have, the faith that I have is two different things. Like, 
Do you see how you have your Holy Spirit? Like okay, your measure of Holy Spirit can be that high. The man measure of Holy Spirit can be not that high, but it can be there. I agree. Yes, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I, well I, I agree with the measurement. <laughs> well, 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 I'm well, lost, but okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm lost in the metaphor. <laughs> um, so basically, um, when you say you have Christ's character, you have to show that you have the Holy Spirit. And as much as we are, it was among the last words of Christ was actually advising that you have his character. You actually pray for the Holy Spirit because one of the things that actually his real last words before he ascended, he was like, um, I will send down a helper. Mm. I'll send down the Holy Spirit. So you actually need the Holy Spirit to have a Christ-like character. Mm. And that was my thing. Amen. Thank mm. you. Thank you, Matthew. And for me, um, just before we go um, to fortune, um, this word character can be a big word, guys. I'm gonna draw my right. <laughs> it feels like a very big word. So I've Googled character is the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. The mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. And some other piece I was trying to um, to understand, um, I'm tempted to use a, a Swahili word kinaloba. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. okay. Please repeat, please repeat. It is what it is. For, <laughs> for future reference. <laughs> so, um, some other version of the lesson, like an easy to read version, was saying that these are the thoughts, feelings, and behavior of a person. Yeah. So, character, what we think that we're talking about, Christ's character, is Christ's thoughts, feelings, and behavior, which, as Marty said, um, it was revealed um, in the way that we treat others, like the, the, the sheep versus the goats. You know, how the sheep are treating others. That revealed that these people had the character of Christ. Mm -hmm. So as we're trying to talk about the character, 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 remember talking about the thoughts, <laughs> the feelings, and the behavior. You actually of, don't say, I have Christ's character. You have to show that. Yeah, you have it, and then you yeah. have to. You can't say, I have it, and then your, your, your actions are just like different, you know, <laughs> words apart. It has to align together. So fortune you had, you had something to say. Yeah. Uh... Matthew in Matthew seven, Jesus says, "You will know them by their fruits." Right? Yeah. And then, the key text at the end of the, uh, the 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 line says, "We are actually transformed from character unto character." I'm gonna replace glory because sometimes glory confuses people. Um, character unto character, by what? The great. By the spirit. Yes. By the Spirit of God. Yeah. Mm. And then Jesus told us, you will know them by the fruits. Yes. And then what does Galatians 5.22 tell us? Mm. But the fruit of the Spirit yes. is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Mm. What are they describing? The character. I mean, like, if you're like, okay, how's Lucy? Well, Lucy's a loving lady. Well, Lucy's a patient lady. Lucy's a humble lady. Amen. Lucy's... Just as I said, humble lady, then she proves me wrong. Yeah, but you get the point. I'm like, still glory to glory. No, but my point is. Um, I'm just emphasizing on, on what Matthew was saying, uh, the parallel of the Holy Spirit and that of character. It's actually very biblical because you cannot separate character and the Spirit. Yeah. The Spirit changes the character yeah. and the character is seen in the deeds and the thoughts and everything. Hence we're told, Romans 12 verse 2, uh, and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. Now that gets us back into what you were saying about mm. the uniqueness of characters and I like how the verse goes from there it says but the renewing of your mind that he may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Um, okay, I'll start, finish writing later. Character versus reputation. Mm. Mm. Okay. What is reputation? What people say. What people mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. or say about you. But mm -hmm. character is what you truly are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now many of us are so focused on upholding our reputation mm -hmm. but not our character. Mm -hmm. So God looks at the character, not the reputation. Mm -hmm. And it's very important in Matthew twenty five, 
mm. the sheep and the goats. Mm. You know, we read this Bible over and over <laughs> again. Mm. But guys, I, I, I guarantee you, people will be lost mm. because they were not helping the needy. Mm. Sure. We may be sitting here discussing, totally going to church, doing everything. But you pass a homeless person, you pass a beggar. It is very clear. The distinction between sheep and goats is just helping the needy. That's all. So let's take this very seriously and very literal. Because Christ identifies with the poor. Mm. Mm. Um, can, I, can I nail on Yonati's point that, you know, when we say about the needy, we only think about people who need food. Mm -hmm. But needy covers all aspects. Mm -hmm. So as much as you help a beggar on the street, please remember there's someone who need, who needs mental help, spirituality, and all. So it's not only the less fortunate in one aspect, which is, but all other aspects. Because I think as much as most Christians would be like, ah, but I gave food to the beggar mm -hmm. on the street, or I gave, you know, but you forget about the other aspects. We are actually told to take care of all his cre creations. Mm -hmm. So that means even the spiritual aspect, if someone, that, that's who you're making friends, to actually cater for all their needs, not just one aspect of their needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a question here um, on, on the day that Martin has just read. So that says that it has been said that character is what a person is in the dark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when no one is looking, Mm. <laughs> That's you. What kind of a person are you? Really? Mm. Okay, sure. Can we say it dramatically? Really? Really? Like, who are you? Mm. Mm -hmm. And what does your answer tell you about what you need to change? Mm. What does it tell me about what I need to change about myself? Mm. You know? And just to also add, um, the, two, two, the great commandments, love God, love others. And the love for others, you know, if you don't have the love of if you don't have the love of God, you can't, you know, yeah. So as we are build, as you are attaining the character of Christ, you know, having the thoughts, the feelings, and the behavior of Christ, mm. and we receive the Holy Spirit, and He fills us with all, you know, all these gifts, and it has gives us all, and we have all these fruits, all that are exhibiting that we have. We have God. Remember that the fundamental thing is love. Do you love God? Do you love others? Mm. That's the that's the underlying thing. That's like the summary. Mm. Love for God and love for mm. others. When you love God and you have love for others, then you it will be easy to do all of these things that are separating the sheep versus the goat. Mm. I like this cliche line. I like this cliche line. To be Christian is to be Christ like. Mm. And therefore, basically, what did Christ do? Mm. Literally, like, I mean, the whole, read, read the whole Bible, he was just basically meeting people's needs. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're not meeting people's needs, you're not Christian. If I'm not meeting people's needs, I'm not Christian. Mm -hmm. Amen. Be Christian is to? Be Christ-like. Okay, like fortune. <laughs> <laughs> fortune. Thou shalt not offend me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the parable of the ten virgins, these are people who are waiting, who are waiting for the second coming of Christ. You know, they're waiting for the bridegroom. For the groom, yeah. Yeah, yes. the bridegroom. <laughs> I, I used to also be com confused with that. I, right. just, just dropped the bride in one of them. Yeah, <laughs> waiting for the groom, okay? And so they need to have the oil, the character of Christ in building them. And you can't say, Come here, give me your thoughts and feelings. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, it's unrealistic. So... <laughs> you can't relate. Uh. <laughs> so, um, what about those who will be alive during the second coming of Christ? Mm. What kind of character do they need to have? Mm. Mr. Fortune, run the quote. Tell us. <laughs> okay. Christ -like. So, two passages. Two passages. Um, we're talking about um, uh, somebody reminded me what's the title of my day? The wise. The wise, right? I thought you were it's the, the wise. wise. Well, right? the wise. Wow. wow, guys, I told you. <laughs> 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 it's the first place. You can 
tell by the fruits. <laughs> you can tell by the fruits. No, the wines. Now, um, there's two passages we're going to focus on, and I'm more excited about the second one, but I think the first one gives a very good introduction. Daniel, the book of Daniel 12, uh, verse 1 to 10. We're not going to read every single verse, but we're going to highlight some very key verses. So, um, and at that time shall Michael, who is Michael? Jesus. Stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. What is that in the quarter, in this quarter? What is that called? Crucible. There shall be a crucible. Mm -hmm. There shall be a crucible. Mm -hmm. uh, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Mm -hmm. And that, just the way it begins, begins with encouragement. That the people who are of God shall be delivered even in this crucible. We're talking about the last time people, because um, this reference here takes us to what Lucy was asking, what about the last one? So now we know the context in which we're talking about is people who are living in the last days, because we know in the last days is when we shall have, well, if you read up the context here, and as I should read a bit ahead, is about the last days. But it's a crucible that we are sure of that we are going to be delivered. That much we can be sure of if we are uh, his people, thy people. Um, everyone that shall be found written in the book. And of course, verse 2 says, um, no, actually, let me skip to verse 3. And they that be white shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. I cannot avoid the parallel of this brightness and that idea of gold after it has gone through the crucible, a time of trouble such as never was and comes out as bright as a firmament and um, as the stars. Again, a crucible for the people of last time. Now, something else to give us a bit of context again here. Uh, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. This is verse 4. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So Daniel start to seal the book. Uh, and we see that by sealing the book, if you continue to read the verses, is that it leaves these things unknown to people. But here's what it says um, in verse 9. It says, And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. So this is the time of the end. Um, uh, verse 10 says, Many shall be purified. Again, the mm. imagery of the crucible, uh, the crucible of purification and made white and tried again. You go through that time of trouble such as never was, but you come out um, white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand mm. what was sealed, but the wise shall understand. So again, the wise people that are being talked about here are people who have gone through the crucible, but as verse 1 told us, um, they shall be delivered. Uh, but then it also tells us when they're being delivered, they come out purified. They come out much better through the trouble that they are going through during this time. And then it also tells us something else that we're being told about the wise people is that they have an understanding that the other people do not have. And the understanding that has been talked about here is the understanding of the scripture, uh, understanding of the prophecy, but in, by by its birth, this understanding of the of the scripture. So it is. Um, uh, uh, the word and the testimony of Jesus Christ. So it's really everything in its entirety. And this is where our character is built. This is the standard of our character. The people who are living in these last times, they are people of the word. Uh, the psalmist says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It is the word that protects us from the wrong character. That we may say to have. Now, let's go to the part that I'm more excited about that I'm going to spend more time in. Uh, Matthew 25. It gives us another idea, another um, uh, picture of the of the of the wise. Mm, uh, Matt did allude to it, Matt did mention it, but I'd love us to go through the verses very quickly as much as we can because there's a lot of truth here about the 
character of, uh, of people during the last time. We've established these wise people in the timing in the book of Daniel. But let's get a bit more context about them. So verse, verse 1 of chapter, of chapter 25 says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Uh, and five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. By the way, take heed that all of these ten did profess to be virgins, did profess to be potential, um, uh, did profess to be waiting for the bridegroom. Mm. Okay, so the distinction here does not lie again um, in people who do not profess anything. We're talking about Christians, we're talking about people who profess to be waiting for Jesus. Again, the symbolism of the God, of gods and sheep comes to mind at this time again. And it says, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. In other words, took no what, as we have learned before? Spirit. Mm -hmm. Come get to character. Okay. Took no spirit with them. But the wise took the spirit mm -hmm. in their vessels with their lamps. So both of them have lamps. Both of them are lighting up. From the observer's eye, well, I can see lamps. But deep inside, one has the spirit and one does not. We're talking about the character of people during the last times. Now, while the bridegroom tarried, while the bridegroom delayed, you know how people today are like, ah, you know, Jesus is not coming, and I've heard people say this, uh, I'm just going to try and be, do whatever it is that I want to do, and then when I hear Jesus is about to come, mm. I start going to church, Bus. and I start doing all the things that I'm supposed to do, right? So while the bridegroom tarried, um, uh, they all slumbered and slept. And I connect this with our scripture here. Uh, even those that had oil did slumber. Mm. Okay. We're being transformed glory unto glory, right? Mm. It's not immediate perfection. It's a process of sanctification that includes falling and getting up. Mm. That's what the crucibles are. But watch what happens. At midnight, there was a cry made. When push came to shove, the difference was clear. Yes, we are all imperfect, but the difference between those who have the spirit and those who do not have is clear. When push comes to shove, at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Both of them thought, well, let's try. They didn't go, eh, no, I'm also spiritual, I'm also professing to be. And then that's when they realized actually there was a difference. So the foolish ones tell to the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Basically, in this last minute, give us your character, for mm. our characters are not good enough. Mm. And I love what the answer is. But the wise answer said, not so. In other words, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> If you know, you know, <laughs> in the words of today. <laughs> Lest there not be enough for us and you. And then they say something that I find a very nice parallel to it in Revelation. It says, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Go to those that sell and buy for yourselves. Now the selling parallel, I'm going to refer to that in Revelation. But the fact that they're told to go buy for yourselves tells us that the character needs to be built at an individual level. Mm -hmm. The people that God shall find here ready to meet him are people who will have built their own character in their personal crucibles when they mm. came out purified. Our wife answered them saying, not so. Uh, uh, meaning it doesn't work like that. And say they say, let there not be enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Mm -hmm. um, the character of the people in the last days is built in their own experience mm. as they go through the crucible and as they are transformed, not by association with any church, not by association with people who study the world, not by association with any titles in the church, but by a genuine experience where you have oil ready when push comes to show. Um, Revelation 3, verse 18 to 20, you find Jesus making a call to Laodicea yeah. about actually uh, buying from him. And we're, we're talking about gold. Um, and he makes more or less um, the, the same parable, which you can read on your own. Revelation 3, 3 uh, verse 18 through 20. 
And uh, while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And this is the nature of what will happen uh, to the people that Jesus will find alive, those that are ready. Mm -hmm. uh, the character, um, many people tend to think that, you know, when we are transformed, as it's said by Paul, um, they think that our characters will be transformed, but actually mm -hmm. not so. Our characters will remain the same. Yes. Our bodies will be transformed. Mm. But the character that you have built here on earth is the character you will have in heaven. Mm. I like how uh, Pastor Randy puts it. If you were slacking here on earth, you will get the little things in the new life because God will give you what you deserve for the slacking on earth. <laughs> <laughs> so build your character while you're here. And a secret has been given uh, to us. Um, a secret has been given to us uh, in the key text that it is the Spirit of God that transforms us glory unto glory. But doing by doing what by beholding His character, um, and uh, that's really where the secret lies in. Behold, continuously behold uh, the character of God. Amen. Thank you. Uh, what I like about the when you drawing a parallel to the Revelation 3.18 is just this, the wise versions are basically telling the the foolish ones, go to Christ and like buy from him your character. Mm. <laughs> and then as they're going to Christ, the, the bedroom comes, comes and then like the door is shut. So, Sheila, mm. I have a question. Yeah. Um, we know Christ is the groom. Yeah. So basically what they say, go to the groom and buy from Yeah, go to the groom. <laughs> Go, go, go to those who sell, so go to Christ, but then as they are trying to, where is Christ, where is Christ, but then they don't, no. So like, they didn't know Christ is the group or okay. Yeah. Um, do you know, do you know that verse like, that says, at some, at, it will get to a point where I say, um, uh, uh, what's this, I, I know yeah, this verse right? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, the just shall remain just, and I, I know that the words in Swahili, but the, not quite sure of the word in English, and I think that as they say, go to them in plurality, um, they're, they're, perhaps it's not necessarily the bridegroom because that is how they sing, mm. but the messengers that uh, would give out. Mm. But remember, this is going to be a time of famine. Yeah, it's going to be a time of famine of the world. So these guys actually go out and they run. And they come back, but the door is closed, and he tells them, I do not know you. Mm -hmm. uh, and you find some parallels to that again when you read Romans 8, uh, verse, um, verse 6 to 8. Uh, it talks about how the difference between being spiritually minded and being currently minded, and how actually the two do not work, and rather being currently minded does not work. Like you're not basically, of course, so when she says, I do not know you, he actually means that I do not know you. But I also think that it's perhaps they are coming back with fake oil because the genuine oil is no longer available yeah. at that point in time. Yeah. Time is of essence. Yeah. That's the yeah. message for the people who are living in the last days. Time. Time is now. So today, the purifying process or the refining process is all about preparing us to receive the bridegroom when he comes. About preparing us to to be ready, you know, to have that character enough to help us, that will ensure that we have a seat at the, that great table in heaven, you know. And it's all about knowing Christ and understanding who He is, and having that character, you know, imbued in us. Like it is in us that we're reflecting Christ's character, and so. Um, as Fortune said, our task is to build our character while here. Okay? Building our character while we are on earth. So while we're here, what are the support systems around us that can help us in this purification process? Because we looked at the standard is Christ's character. The agent is the fire and we're supposed to come out with faith. We're supposed to have faith as we're being taken through the fire. And then the goal is to have the character of Christ, you know? So as we are going through all of this, what can help us? What are the support systems, you know, that are around us that can help us to build this character on earth naturally? Okay, so um, I'll quote what Brother Fortune said. He said that 
our character cannot be built all by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that we are ready to build our character so as we can build it. It's just like how we can say that um, a, Christ a Christian's character, so if you don't have if you don't have Christ inside you, then you're not a Christian. You can be having Christ inside you, like you may be doing one, two, three, like if at the same time you may be not helping the needy, or at the same time you may not be doing what God did those days. So at one way or the other, yes, we may going, we may be going to church, we may be praying, we may be doing the cottery. Like you know, if we don't have that Christ character or that Christ in us, then we don't have that. Um, so today we're talking about character and community, with which the character of the church is the sum and collaboration of every member's character. Mm -hmm. So I go back and say, if our character, if the members of the church, so of course here's the character, whether the character is like the church and the community is the people <coughs> outside us. We are the people who should help, who, who should help the people who are needy. It's just like how we distribute all the all the loving things or maybe all those those you know how we go when we go to the orphanage and all that when we give the children when they're happy and all that that is the same way that God is also happy there. It's the same way how we go when when we go to the prisons. So when we go to give them the soaps, their food, the whatever it is not us doing it for our sake but we're doing it for Christ because Christ is inside us. But also in the same thing um, I would want to to go to first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 and it says I will all that up. okay and it says don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God you don't belong to yourself we don't we don't belong to ourselves for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in one way or the other, with anything that we do, we should, we should reflect with Christ. Like with our bodies and with everything that, okay, it's, it's, like, it's like how we say, um, I'll, I'll quote what Pastor, Pastor Ray said today, with a lot that we're doing, or with, the, with a lot that we're seeing, Food is also one of the things that we're, we're, we, we can be eating all wrong. Like, and at the same time, it's like we're destroying our bodies. At the same time, we don't know. Like, and we're like, okay, it's fine. This food is good for me. But at the same time, it's not healthy for you. So with you, you're destroying your, you're, you're destroying your health. But you want to know that at that pace, you know it at the, at the last point when you are really, when you're really sick or you're suffering from something, you'll be like, shoot, that was sugar. That's why, that's why I have one, two, three. So also at the same time, um, in Ephesians, we are told the church is the same as, as a body. Jesus, same as the head, and us, same as the, yes. as the body parts. So God is the, is the head, the father, the father who controls us. It's just like how in your family, the father is the head, then the mother is the head, then the children are the, the part of the body. <laughs> okay? But also at the same time, um, God, uh, God made the church so hard, so 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 that we will become same as a full grown man. He made the church so as we could represent Him all well. He made the church so as we could be seen through Him. Like people could be seeing us, and and like okay, people could be seeing us, seeing seeing God through us. Yes, people could be seeing God through us, and not us being portrayed in different ways. That's why there's, like, there's a question about at times we were asked from back, when you go when you go a place, do people see God or do people see something different? Or maybe do do, do, do you actually leave a mark when you go somewhere? Because we're we're always told that if you go do something or if you're you're going to do something good or or best, it shouldn't be you. You should you should you should leave a mark behind that okay yeah um, those people really touched our hearts or maybe those people really did something but with which at that moment it wasn't you it was Christ inside you it was him 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 portraying through you but at the, at the same time he used us so as we could be portrayed to the to the people yes that's what we're learning today but also at the same time we're told glory of God is his character so if we're not his character then we're failing a big part mm. amen amen and 
um, just to add on to what you said about Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 16. So, um, let me just, let me just, let me just read it. It says, uh, verse 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in which we see. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. And for me, um, I'd like to focus more on verse 13, yeah, that we are all given different gifts in the church so that we can come together in the unity of the faith that we have faith in God. And to come together to understand who God is and to be perfect, like to, to understand the fullness of Christ. And when we understand the fullness of Christ and have that character in building us as a community, yeah, then we, as, as a church, you know, like if, you know, if all of us see what reflect the character of Christ, then it also is a bigger message, you know, to the rest of the community around us that there's something different, there's, there's, there's something peculiar for this group of people. But even deeper than that, it goes to just show that, I mean, of course, we say character is, you know, because it's a personal work to develop your character. But God has seen it fit to also have, to also give us the gift of the community, of the, you know, believers around us, that we may strengthen each other in faith. So you're not, you're not running the race alone, you know. If it's your race, then you know, ah, when I fall, well, there's Christ ahead. I also have my brother here who can understand what I've gone through, you can share, you can encourage each other in the word. And so, to some extent, while we are running the race alone and trying to attain, trying to, you know, have Christ's character revealed in us, we are also called to come together as a community and build each other up. And so that we can all have that unity, you know, unity in faith, that singleness of the knowledge of God, the understanding of Him and His Son. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in First Corinthians nine, verse um, twenty-four, it says, "Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain." Mm -hmm. And then it continues to say, "And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things." Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, that we are incorruptible. So he makes a comparison of how in a race, people, people actually prepare for months, for years, just to run for 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. And it is only one person who gets the, like, the grand prize. But he says, we are also in a race, but the advantage is that in this race, it is not just one person who gets the prize, it's everyone. Mm -hmm. As long as you pass the finish line, you have a prize. Yeah, right, yeah. So we need to understand that in this journey, in this race, um, in this spiritual warfare that everyone is going through, there is no winner. So we should not compete mm -hmm. with each other. Mm -hmm. The church is the body of Christ. I have never seen a body, you know, there is no such thing as the, the best organ mm. of the body. The award for best organ of the body <laughs> goes to the reason. Stomach. Because. And, <laughs> oops. The stomach. The award goes to the stomach. Yeah. The stomach is actually what will make many people be lost. But, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways um, sidetracked with my points. <laughs> but. The stomach. <laughs> the stomach. I <laughs> want. <laughs> Organ. When one organ is in pain, mm. the other organs don't celebrate. Mm. They, work. they all, all work go in, in pain. Mm. Then why is it so hard to understand when we, the church is the body of Christ? Mm. 
So if one of us is in pain, or one of us is suffering, one of us is not working, why are we celebrating? You know, we are so quick to disfellowship people and see what happened. But we're not quick to help them. So if we don't feel for the sufferings of others, that should tell us that maybe we are not part of the body of Christ. Because if you're really part of the body, you will feel for a fellow body in part of your suffering. And in Ephesians here, it says that the whole purpose is for the edifying of the body of Christ. It is not about you, it's not about who's going to be the closest to God. Guys, we, we should help one another because we're all forming the same body. So, um, and I know how the world has made us think or why is that, you know, there's always, you always have to be better than someone else. And sadly, we have transferred that also in our spiritual in a spiritual work, we have to be better than someone. When you see someone excelling um, in prayer or in, you know, we, we start to get jealous and all that, we just, it, it's not right. So, if you really are a part of the body of Christ, then you must feel for the family. And so, again, thank you all so much for joining us, um, for, you know, leading us from this discussion. And I hope that we learn and we remember that. It's all about our character. It's all about our character. It's all about our people as well. So as we close, I would like to ask I'd like to ask Nacho to be very present with Amen. Amen. Amen.